Hello and welcome to You So You. My name's Zoe and this is my channel all about the crafty bits and pieces I get up to. I knit, I sew, I spin and I drop spindle, I dabble in weaving from time to time and anything else that takes my crafty fancy. But today we are looking at what I was working on in December as well as looking ahead to the rest of 2024. So grab a brew, put your feet up and let's get started. and welcome back to returning viewers and to new viewers a very warm welcome to you as i mentioned at the start of the video we're looking at my december makes as well as the plans for 2024 so without any further ado let's get started with what i am wearing so i am wearing a fully me made outfit today which is great and uh, so i'm wearing the iris tea by forget me not patterns which is the one with the pleated sleeves I'm wearing the riley overalls by true bias which is one of my december fo's uh, there'll be more details on this project on the Minerva website. And my profile will, for that will be linked down below. Uh, they're made in a twill from Minerva, which was given to me as part of the Minerva Brand Ambassador Programme. Also added a little bee iron-on patch here. Um, and these are basically my jeans replacements. They are getting a lot of wear. They're really comfy. I like them. The True Bias block works for me for trousers. Uh, on top of that, I am wearing my Nightfall cardigan, which is a pattern by Skane Deer Knits. It's available on Ravelry. I don't think she sells things anywhere else, but do let me know if I'm wrong on that. I've worked this up in Cascade Heritage, so commercial yarn, and it was my Christmas sweater project this year, mostly because of the pine trees at the bottom. So although I knit it for Christmas, it is essentially a winter themed sweater. So I should be able to get a bit more wear out of it than just Christmas Day itself in future years. And uh, the fit's lovely, I'm really pleased with it. And again, it's getting a lot of wear. So those are my two finished objects for December. The cardigan with its dorset buttons that I made myself and the Riley overalls. Uh, so let's move on to what I was working on during December. Those of you who were watching my Vlogmas will have seen my Christmas themed projects. So we'll start with those. Uh, let's start with the needle felted advent calendar from the Crafty Kit Company. I still have quite a lot of that left to do because I wasn't working on it as I opened them. Um, so I'll be leaving that accessible so that when the mood strikes me for a quick needle felting project, uh, the largest ones are just a few hours of work, the smallest ones are an hour to two hours. Um, so when the mood strikes me, it'll be there. Um, fairly quick win project, so that's good. Um, so we've made the bobble hat. I'm not going to show you these in the order they open them, by the way, because they're not still with their packet. So we've made the bobble hat. We've made the Poina Setia brooch, which is the only project in the the advent calendar that wasn't needle felted, but is using felt. Uh, we've made a bell, which has been um, aged with the the colours there. So it's got a little loop at the top. And it's got a dongle at the bottom as well. So then we have three little cute projects out of that advent calendar. There was 12 mini projects, which are this size. This is the little acorn. Um, so 12 of those and 12 larger projects, but still not like huge projects. And um, made a little penguin in a bobble hat. And it's adorable. And I've made a robin. Now, I am very much a novice needle felter, so uh, the beak was a bit tricky on the robin, and his tail looks a little bit more like an 80s ponytail. So, it's fine. He's still cute. Um, so, yeah, so hopefully throughout the course of the year, I'll get those worked on so that they're ready for next year. But I don't know about you, but I do struggle to work on Christmassy projects or projects to use at Christmas during most of the year. January is okay. I can do Christmassy stuff in January, possibly into early February, but I'm hoping to be able to, to maintain that momentum throughout the course of the year so I can actually finish some things. Uh, my other Christmassy themed project is a cross stitch project that I bought in the summer, thinking if I start it now, I think it was July, start it now, I'll have it done for Christmas. I was wrong. So this is my table runner. Now, if you're watching my vlogmas, you will have seen me complete this section of it. And you'll have heard me say, oh, I'll get the leaves done. 
for this corner, get this corner complete at least before Twelfth Night when the decorations come down. I'm taking the decorations down once I finish filming. I have not finished this first corner and there's another one to do at the other end. Um, so again, this will be staying out um, accessible throughout the course of the year so that should the mood strike me, I can actually get some more work done on this. You never know. I might have it done ready for December the 1st to put out next Christmas. I mean, it probably won't, but I might. It's possible. Um, so yeah, so that's the Christmassy, Christmassy theme stuff you will have seen me working on during Vlogmas. Um, one other project that you may have seen me working on um, during Vlogmas is in my Moulin Rouge uh, sock project bag. This is my carry around with me socks. Uh, they are the Lilica socks using the Rusamine technique. Uh, next week's video will be a demonstration of how I'm doing this technique. And the pattern is this one from uh, the Knitter. So it's the Lilica socks. It's an Alex Bird pattern. I am working towards the toes at the moment. Um, I'm not using the yarn that she used in the pattern, but my colour my colours are pretty well matched. Purely coincidental, I just used what I had in stash. Um, so they're quite a simple, net simple project to work on. I'm using Socks Yeah. Um, I've got some leftovers I'm using for this. I've just clipped them on here to control the tangle. I am past the heel. Um, so yeah, so we're working towards the toe. So hopefully they will be finished in the next couple of weeks because then I can put my Christmas Day cast on into that bag to be my carry around uh, project. Uh, that's my sock bag that sock project bag that fits in my handbag the best, um, which is why I, I want to swap these into that bag rather than in my adipose uh, sock sack, uh, shawl sack, scarf. This is bigger than a sock sack. Um, the adipose Doctor Who fans will know what that is. But I'm so glad it is back. I'm going to Christmas Day one. Um, so yeah, these are my Christmas Day cast on. Um, I didn't get very far casting them on. I was meant to cast them on, well, my intention was to cast them on on Christmas Eve, um, but I got sick for Christmas, so um, yeah. I did get them cast on Christmas Day, but I only got like halfway up the toe increases on Christmas Day, and it's taken me until the day before yesterday to get this far. Um, I am better now, um, but Christmas wasn't fun. Um, so these are in the West Yorkshire Spinners Nutcracker colourway on a sparkle base. So it's their 2023 Christmas colourway and I'm doing a very basic 4x2 rib across the instep at the moment. Might change that up as I go up the sock. We'll see how uh, it holds my attention. But, uh, yeah, so looking forward to getting those into my Moulin Rouge bag so that I can stick them in my handbag and take them with me places and knit on them in coffee shops, that kind of thing. So having not got very far on the socks, I, of course, did a New Year's Eve cast on, obviously. Uh, this is a project that I've been waiting to cast on for a little while. The yarn came with my subscription to The Knitter magazine, um, which, when it first launched many, many years ago, uh, was targeting more experienced knitters because the only knitting magazines you could get in the UK were... Uh, very much aimed at beginners. Um, so this was magazine specifically targeted more experienced knitters in more complicated patterns or patterns with a bit more interest to them. Um, I don't know how different it is to other magazines now because it's the only magazine I pick up really for knitting. Um, I don't normally get it on a regular basis but because the yarn for this project which is Macintosh hand dyed BFL in 150 gram skeins in my serenity and my joy but i don't know which one's which and um, that came with the subscription for for the magazine and i like the colors and i like the patterns i thought well guess i'll be getting the knitter for a year and um, so i've done the first repeat of the first section the pattern itself is split into four parts over four issues of the magazine so i can knit along they were running i do now have all four parts and um, so I won't have to wait to get into the next section once I've finished this one. I need to repeat this lace pattern. Uh, I think it's three times total. And then sort of 
almost a whole repeat again. So three and a bit times uh, before I can move on to the next section. And the shawl itself is like a, a wide stole type scarf and shawl thing. It's called Barragan. It's by Kath Andrews. And that's the, the photo that came with the first uh, section of the pattern. So I'm working through that. That's going to take a little while because it's lace. Um, I did have to rip it back because I dropped some stitches. Didn't track the rows I was ripping back properly. Got confused. Frogged the whole thing and started again. And knit that up in a few hours yesterday. Um, I rarely put, I, mean, I don't ever put in line, lifelines. I should. I don't. Um, I, I just don't think of them at the time, <laughs> essentially. Um, yeah. I have put it in stitch markers though with the repeats by row so that I can keep track of where I am. And I just get that as minimizing errors. It was simply that I dropped a couple of stitches and didn't count the rows properly as I was pulling back that made me lose my place. Um, but yeah, like I say, it didn't take long to get back to beyond where I was when the error occurred. So that's good. Um, so that's the New Year's Eve cast on. Um, it's going to take me a while to get through that because lace and it's big. Um, but I'm enjoying that. It's not a complicated lace. It's, it's quite an effective pattern. It's like an interlocking diamonds thing. Uh, so yeah, so working on that. And obviously, having done a New Year's Eve cast on, I did a New Year's Day cast on as well. Because why wouldn't you? Why would you not cast on all things? Um, so in my TARDIS project bag that came from Australia, thank you, Karen. Um, can you spot the Hoovian thing? I'm a casual Hoovian, but still, I grew up with it. It's my thing. Um, so, in here, we have, in my own hand-dyed yarn, uh, this is 100% Merino. Um, this is my first attempt at the colourway, and I will be blending in the revamped version of the colourway, which is much more bright, much more vibrant, so I will be blending in as I get towards the end of these two skeins that I'm alternating now. This is a pattern by Hoki Locatelli. It's the long line cardi, which is an open front um, cardigan. I do think long line cardigans are very useful to have in your wardrobe. Um, so yes, yeah, so I'm, I'm looking forward to being able to wear this one. I have had to fudge the gauge a little bit. Um, on the recommended needles, my gauge was tighter than required so i mean i could have knit up a larger size um but uh by going up one needle size um, i'm getting a fabric that i quite like and um the gauge is now slightly looser and called for i'm i'm okay with that I'd rather have something slightly larger than slightly tighter um so yeah so i'm working on the shoulders at the moment. I'm alternating skeins. I've got two skeins attached to this in a minute. Um, I did the first bit of the collar. So you do the bit that goes across the back of the neck first. Um, so I did that in my first skein. And then when I was picking up stitches to start doing across the back, I added in my second skein. Um, and because it's knit flat, I'm doing two rows in each skein and changing skeins at the, the front edge. Um, here, so there's my two skeins attached, um, but it's it's given me quite a nice neat edge, so that's fine. Um, as I get towards the end of the first skein, I will add in the re revamp version of the colourway uh, um, and blend that in, and then the the lower portion of the cardigan and the sleeves will be worked in the more vibrant version of the colourway. Um, the difference is essentially. Um, I'm still learning to dye. So, so when I was scaling up the type, the, the amount of, of uh, dye that I was using on and having more skeins in the pan, it made a difference to how the, the yarn took up the colours. But I do prefer the new version to the original version. The original version is nice, don't get me wrong, I do like it. Um, but the, the new version is more what I was aiming for. So that's good. Okay, so that was New Year's Day's cast on. So, two pairs of socks, a fingering weight shawl and a fingering weight cardigan. Um, they're all quite small needles, small gauge projects. So yesterday I was like, hmm, do you know what? I, I kind of fancy knitting on something that's a bit of a larger gauge. And um, 
I actually get from my boss each Christmas a Marks and Spencer's voucher, so usually like 20, 25 quid, that kind of thing. So just after Christmas each year, when Marks and Spencer's are starting to reduce their prices, I go onto their website with my voucher. Um, in previous years, I've bought a plant pot, I've bought, I've uh, put it towards some plants, um, and this year I bought a replacement for my wax melt, which I broke, um, and some, max, some uh, wax melts to go with it. I also bought myself a hot water bottle, but I didn't like the cover. I couldn't get one without a cover. I mean, there's nothing wrong with a cover. It's a neutral colour and it's it's like faux fur. It's, it's fine. It's just not what I was looking for. Um, I wanted a knitted cover. Um, and they did have, on the Marks and Spencer's website, in the reduced section, wool couture kits for hot water bottle covers. So, if I had been buying it directly through wool couture, I would have had the option to have a hot water bottle included with it, according to... Uh, the, the list of what you'll need, um, but that is an option to have the needles included, to have the hot water bottle included. So this is the pattern. I may or may not do the pom-poms, I'm undecided. Um, and it's knit in a chunkier yarn than I normally have on hand, which is why I bought the kit essentially, because I mean, I, I could work out a pattern for a hot water bottle um, cover, and there are plenty around, but I don't normally have chunky weight yarn in stock, which is what I wanted for the hot water bottle cover, to give that bit of distance between the hot water bottle and yourself. So this is uh, Cheeky Chunky, which is the Walkature's uh, roving yarn. Uh, it's 100% merino. Um, I also had included in the kit a darning needle. I never see darning needles included in knitting kits, it's great. And eight mil uh, bamboo needles. Um, so everything that you need was included. Apart from the hot water bottle cover, the hot, hot water bottle itself, because I was buying it through Marks and Spencer's, not through Walkature. Um, and in a couple of hours yesterday, giving my hand a break from the uh, small gauge knitting, worked out the first section. So you do small section and then you do a long section. So for the long section, you do the same pattern to this point and then you continue the moss stitch uh, to the length they give in the pattern and then fold it around your hot water bottle. Um, and it tells you what uh, cord to put in here and you do the, the frills and what have you. Uh, so it's a nice, simple uh, pattern. It is an easy pattern. Beginners would absolutely be able to follow the pattern and knit it up once you've worked out cast-ons, knit and purl stitch. Absolutely follow this pattern. However, I would not recommend this yarn for beginners. It's, it's a lovely yarn, it's really soft, it's going to be really cosy, it works out really quickly, but because it's a roving yarn it pulls apart really easily and beginner knitters tend to knit tighter than knitters with a couple of projects under their belt. So I wouldn't recommend it for a first couple of projects. Get a couple of projects under your belt and then use this sort of yarn. Um, in the meantime, a chunky yarn with more of a twist to it is going to hold together a bit better for you. It's going to be a bit easier to work with when you're still working out your tension and that kind of thing. But the pattern itself, you're yeah, absolutely beginner friendly. Uh, so yeah, so that's going to take me maybe a couple of days of knitting time. Uh, I'm not going to obviously necessarily get it done this weekend. It's not super cold, so I'm in no rush to be using the hot water bottle and it does have a cover on it in the meantime. Um, but yeah, a couple of sessions of knitting on it and it should be done. It, it's very quick to, to work up. So that is my uh, works in progress, things I'm actively working on at the moment. So looking ahead to 2024. Now in previous years I've done make nine and I've never completed them. So I'm not doing make nine this year. And I think essentially the problem for me is that it's just too long of a time span to be planning for. So I'm going to break the year down into smaller chunks. Now it is kind of broken down for me this year because we have before wedding and after wedding. Getting so married at the end of July. Um, so that's a nice little break point in the year, but I'm going to think even smaller. I'm going to think three months, um, essentially, for my assessment point. So there are things that I may make for the wedding, um, but they will be shared in August. Um, but let's think shorter term. First three months of the year, what do I want to achieve? Well, first of all, you'll have seen my vaguely organised craft room. I have a problem with my craft room. It's really small. It's really not organised properly. 
So when I come to start a project, I'll look at the notions list and I'll order the stuff that's on the notions list, completely forgetting that I've got some of the notions in stock because my room is not organised. I don't know what I have. So first big focus, first big project for the year for this quarter. And we'll assess it in March, if not the roundup of what I've been working on in March is to make my vaguely organised craft room a little bit less vague so that I know what I have. I do multiple crafts, uh, so I have supplies for multiple crafts, all in a very small space, um, and yeah, it just needs to be better organised uh, so that I'm not rebuying things that I already have. I'm not doing no buy. Um, I don't buy huge amounts of stuff anyway. Um, I do have things in stash that I bought for projects that I never did, I changed my mind on for one reason or the other. Um, and then I obviously have notions and stuff in, in stock. Um, but by having the craft room a little bit better organised, I just see what I have and I'll be able to start from what I have and then supplement them with things that I need. So linings, uh, notions, uh, contrasting fabrics, uh, main colour yarns for colour work, because I've, I've got plenty of single skeins of stuff. I don't have a sweater's quantities because they're quite big and expensive to buy. Um, so I tend to buy them as I need them, which works well for me. Too big a stash and I get a bit overwhelmed. Too disorganised a stash, I don't know what I have and I get a bit overwhelmed. So yes, yeah, so we're going to take control of the craft room. So that's focus number one. Focus number two is to do with my works in progress. I have lots of things on the go in multiple crafts that either I've promised you guys updates and videos on so I need to get those out and dumped to you things like my tapestry woven cushion covers my hand sewn top that kind of thing things that you've seen me start but they haven't actually finished uh, amongst other things that I've started and I want the thing but I haven't done the stuff I need to do to have the thing so I need to do that if I want the thing I have to make the thing it's not going to do it itself so focus two is getting control of my works in progress so that I'm actually making progress on them. And they're not just sitting there, hanging out and chilling in the corner of the craft room, because that, that's pretty much where I'm at. So that's my first two things. My third focus is a little bit longer term. So I'm getting married in July, um, and there are a few things that I would like to see if I can manage to make for the wedding. Uh, things like the bridesmaids outfits, I'll probably make those, although the bridesmaids live in Bulgaria, so that's going to make fitting a challenge. Um, which is fine. Uh, the reason I want to make them is because two of them are 11, one of them is 17, so there's quite an age gap. I don't necessarily want them identically dressed, but I do want them coordinating, and I do want them age appropriate. So trying to find the style that I want in the sizes that I want, in age appropriate cuts that I want, in the colours that I want, for the price that I can afford to pay, it's making them might, might be a better option. Um, so there's that, but I won't be showing you wedding makes until uh, August, so you'll see them after the wedding. Uh, things that I make for the honeymoon, however, I will be sharing. Um, so I definitely need to make myself an outfit for formal night. Uh, we're going on a cruise for honeymoon and they, they do these formal nights. Uh, so I'm not thinking ball gown or anything that formal, um, just a slightly more elevated from the smart casual outfits that I already have. I've got plenty of smart casual outfits. I don't have something to fill the little black dress gap. So it may not be black, but uh, it's, it's that sort of level of formality that I'm looking for. Um, I haven't picked a pattern, haven't picked a fabric, don't know what kind I'm going to do. Um, but we've got six months for that one, so that's fine. So two quarter pro pro projects, getting in control of the craft room, getting in control of the works in progress, and then long term wedding honeymoon stuff. So yeah, that's my plan for the first chunk of the year. We'll reassess it in March um, and plan it again for the next three months. And thank you so much for spending time with me today. Let me know down below what your plans are for 2024, for the first part of the year, for the whole year, however you're doing it. And I will look forward to seeing you in the next video. In the meantime, there's this one here on screen that may be of interest to you. I will see you next time. But until then, happy crafting and bye-bye for now.